here from Webkin Tempo, and I'm about to show you a super cool trick. So we've been building a ton of sites lately, and there's a couple things I've really been obsessing over. One is these new background dividers um, by Divi that's built right into the theme. I'm not going to show you that today because you probably already know about it, but my god do I love those things. They just make your sites look so much cooler, they're so easy to use, and uh, they really just t help you take it to the next level without really requiring a lot of extra work. So those things are great. Um, but the other thing that I've really been doing a lot of lately is just adding little touches of advanced CSS, a little animations here and there. Um, they're usually super easy to implement and they just give you that little extra wow factor that your client's probably not expecting, your visitors aren't expecting. It's going to make your site look super modern and super cool and just help engage people more with it. So um, one of those things I'm going to show you today, super easy to do. There's an online uh, free tool that will do most of the heavy lifting for you in just a couple seconds and I'm going to show you that all right now. So let's go. Okay, so what we are going to be talking about today is gradient backgrounds. These are uh, pure CSS, they don't use any JavaScript or anything like that, and they are super, super easy to implement. As you can see, um, I'm already here at this online tool, you can just type in uh, gradient-animator, I'm going to put that down below so you can go right to it. And uh, basically right here, you just configure all your options and it's going to spit out this code. And you can use this, easily implement it on your Divi site or really any type of uh, HTML site, any kind of content management system, and uh, easily get a gradient background going. So. Uh, basically, I'm just going to show you what you do here. Now, right here, this is going to be the name of the animation. Now, the first few times I did, I did this, I did not um, even know about this, and then it just puts animation name in here, which is okay, except if you're going to do multiple ones of these, it's going to start crossing you up. So, um, you always want to just name this something. It doesn't really matter. I just use gradient background. You could do gradient background one, two, whatever, and it's going to update that right in there for you. Um, now here is where you can kind of uh, twerk the angles of uh, where your gradient is um, going, coming from and how it's scrolling. And then here is where you can mess with the speed. And you'll see that um, as I'm doing that, it's changing the numbers right in here. So pay attention to that because um, this is an easy way for you to adjust the speed on your own later on uh, without having to go back to this tool. You can just go right in here, update these three numbers one way or the other depending on how you want it to go and you can easily adjust those. So um, so you can set that on whatever speed you'd like and then uh, let's see, let's set it right now at let's set it at 20. Uh, then here for color uh, you can see you can add as many colors as you want and um, what I tried to do here actually was uh, add some opacity to them because um, of something else I'm going to show you later. However, that didn't work. It ended up spitting them back out like this. So when you do this, you're just going to either want to use the color picker or you can put in a hex code or you could put in the RGBA, but just note that it's going to spit them out like that. So um, that's fine. And another thing is uh, note that the colors are all right here. So this is another thing. You can go back in and just edit this little one line of code here and change a color, move a color around, whatever. Um, so you're probably going to want to have at least two colors in here, but you can have as many as you want. Now this one, this demo I have right here, I'm just using the four different colors from my logo. Um, but again, yeah, you can set, up, set that up however you want. So uh, once you have, have this set up the way you want it, you just click the preview button here. And it's going to show you. Um, see, it's not really that much different, but you'll notice that the angle is um, different than it was before. Uh, but yeah, so overall pretty cool. Uh, if we go to super fast speed, you'll see, you should see uh, it's going quite a bit faster now. So if you like the super fast speed, you can do that. Otherwise, you can go the really slow speed and just get a really subtle effect. So a lot of different ways you can do this. You can make this look super unique in um, just about any kind of application. So now that you've got this code, there's a couple things you got to do. Um, this is these are going to go into two different places. Now this this messed me up really bad because um, I implemented this on one site and then I couldn't remember how I did it. So I kept trying to put this whole thing into um, directly into the page and it wouldn't work. And the reason is because these uh, keyframes need to go in your CSS file and these attach right to the to the element that you want to put the gradient on. So I'm going to show you a page. Um, I just set it up as an example here. We're kind of working on a redesign for my site and uh, one of the things that I'm doing is um, trying to work in these gradient backgrounds. That's why I have it in the color of our logo or whatever. It's probably not going to look like this ultimately, but um, you kind of get the idea there. So uh, if we hop into this page here, uh, first you see I'm, uh, this is the back end of my site. 
Um, I added a plugin called Custom CSS. Uh, that's because I have a bunch of CSS on the site. You can actually just go into Divi theme options in, in the CSS down there. Just paste these things right at the top of the CSS file and click save and then you're good to go. Um, then you're going to want to hop into the page that you want to edit. So if I go in here and find my, um, let's see, this is this page is called uh, it's this one we're working on right here. Let's see, we've done a couple of these. Um, anyway, so you'll go right into the element that you want to edit. So in this case, it's going to be the first header element. Go pop right in here and then into the advanced tab. And um, all you're going to need to do is just paste that right into the main element. And that's it. Uh, once you do those two things, you can save the page, and you're going to get something that looks like this. Now, you'll notice that there's some extra code here. That's because I used an image background. So that's kind of taking this to the next level. Um, it's a little bit of an extra step, but it's pretty cool to overlay this on top of an image. And it's nice because um, you know sometimes when you do gradients on top of the image using those other type of effects. Um, it doesn't work on all browsers. This is actually pretty browser compatible. Um, so anyway, to do that, we just add to the before. This is the code that's going to let you pop in your image, OK? And you notice I set the opacity on that image to 0.1, so um, super low. And uh, so you just see a little bit of the image, and then the gradient kind of goes over the top. Now you can you can mess with that if you want it to be less opaque or however you want to do it. The rest of this code you don't really need to mess with. So basically all you would do, uh, what I did is I just uploaded my image in the media manager, uh, popped the URL right in there, and then um, I kind of messed with this opacity until I got it down to point 0.1, which is uh, you know the way that I ended up liking it. So that's pretty much it. Now um, another thing I will tell you is that um, for extra browser compatibility, you're going to want to add this line of code. Background, and then whatever background. This is going to give you a solid background color, and this is just going to be a fallback in case if the um, gradient doesn't work on your thing. So um, you probably just want to use like one of these colors. Like I would just take this first one here, and then set that as your background. And because uh, you're putting another background right below it, it's not even going to pay attention to this unless this one doesn't work on that browser, and then it'll fall back on this one. So no matter what, I mean, it's not going to look as cool, but if for somebody's using IE6 or something like that, it's still not going to look that bad. It's You'll still see the uh, background image, and then I don't know if this is going to work on there or not, but, you know, it's better, better than it being broken. So um, I always throw that in there just in case to have a fallback, um, but, of course, that is optional. So... That's pretty much it. You just need to use those two things. Now, <clears throat> I'll show you another implementation implementation I did on this site. Um, this was actually the first site I did it on. And you see we did a little bit more subtle effect with just a couple of colors here at the bottom of the page. And then um, if we go into a sub page, I also set up the sub pages so that they... Um, have this on the top too, which I think is a super cool effect. Um, it's kind of a different way to go. You could also, again, have this with the uh, picture background if you wanted to. But it's sometimes it's nice to have these ones um, just plain. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, but anyway, I think this is a pretty cool implementation too. And you also note that it works with the Divi dividers. So, you know, again, this was super easy to set up, but it actually looks like pretty cool. And like, you know, we. Um, you know, just it's something a little bit more than you would expect to see on a on a website. So you know, just just a little extra something to uh, make it pop. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, and basically, that again is just the exact same thing I showed you on the other site. You're just going to want to paste the keyframes into the CSS file, and then the rest of them go. The rest of that stuff goes right in the header. And then um, again, for this one, I put a fallback also. So the last thing I'm going to show you is another pretty cool implementation. Um, and what I did here is these gradient buttons, okay? So this is, I think, uh, a pretty cool thing. You could use this 
um, in all different types of situations. Like, for example, you could do one that's just a really subtle gradient and do like a red to like a dark orange so it just barely shimmers a little bit, but just to draw somebody's attention to it, I think would be a really good implementation of it. Um, and again, this one was pretty easy to set up. So if we go back in here, I'll show you how I did it. Um, I generated that same code the same way I showed you on the CSS Gradient Animator site. Um, and then in here, let's see, this is, I don't even remember what this thing is. Oh yeah, Perky Animate Module, okay. So, um, let's see. So, where is this? Yep, so on the button, we just went right in here and uh, this time I pasted the keyframes in here, but uh, I actually don't think I needed to do that because I already had them in the style sheet. And I didn't, as you can see, I left it as animation name. However, um, yeah, basically same exact implementation. We just put it right in here and um, works perfectly. So um, as you can see, um, that is corresponds to the one at the top. There's actually a second implementation I did. This. And this one, um, I think I actually went into the style sheet because it, it started out as a ghost button where it was just um, transparent on the inside and you know just the white outline. So I, I actually went in here and uh, adjusted some of the CSS myself on it. Uh, which you can do or you can leave it as is, it doesn't really matter. Um, but as you can see I did these other buttons, here's another one. Um, this one also has a subtle gradient. You can barely even see it because it's moving really slowly. But um, yeah, same thing. This one, I, yep, see I created a class called gradient button. So I added this um, all this code inside of this class instead of in the thing. Let's go in and I'll, and I'll show you. Um, let's see, where is that one? I here? No. In here. Yep. Okay, so super easy to set up. All I did, a class equals gradient button, href, and the URL. Super, super simple. Um, and then if you just pop over here into the uh, Divi library, oops, not the Divi library. Um, the, uh, let's see, theme options. Okay, yep, here's where I set up the gradient button right here. You can see this is all the code um, from the fr that was spit out by the gradient animator. Then I, um, this was the CSS that was originally on the button, and I just took this and um, co copy pasted it in here and then adjusted it so that, it, you know, I removed the border and because it doesn't make sense to have a white border on a button on a white background, etc. So, um, and then here I just added a hover effect just to give it a little opacity. Um, just so you can see when you hover that it actually is doing something. And then here you can also see where I pasted those keyframes in there. So um, that's pretty much it. So just one class. Um, and I got that whole button styled just by creating this one class, which is mostly just uh, two different sets of CSS that I copy pasted in here and then just edited a little bit to get the way I liked. So that one was super easy to set up as well. And then here's one on a form also. Um, and as you can see, this one still has most of the same stuff as the form. So I got the cool hover effect. So I like that. And then that one, um, let me see here. Let's go. I think I just on this one, it's been a couple of days since I did this now. Yep, here, right in the button again. Pop that right in there. As you can see, I blew it again and um, added that stuff in there because it took me a while to figure it out. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, this all this stuff, um, except for the keyframes, is all you need to put in there. As long as you got your keyframes in the um, main CSS file, then you should be good to go. Or you could also um, put those keyframes in here. would also work. If you wanted to just have it on one page but you probably just want to put it in the CSS file so that's it so there's a, a few different ways that you can implement this um, you know I'm sure there's probably way more you can do besides that those are just the ones I've been able to think of so far but again I think doing these buttons um, is a big one you could probably do a lot of cool stuff with that so um, yeah definitely something to play around with this this is a great tool super easy to use um big props to em forest for creating this and uh, making it so we can all use it because um we definitely can always use more awesome tools like this so great job on that and uh yeah i hope you guys will uh, give this a try and play around with it and i'm sure you'll be able to make some super cool stuff with it 
thanks again guys be sure to like subscribe and keep coming back because i'm gonna be dropping more stuff like this all the time i got a bunch of stuff in the queue and we're just gonna keep it rolling so thanks again for watching and i hope to see you back here soon